Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rothman PPC podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. This is a podcast about Google ads and business and a little bit of life. And uh, here we are, it's a Sunday night, Father's Day, my first Father's Day, June 21st, 2020. It was a fantastic day and a great weekend. And now I'm planning out my week here late on a Sunday night, got a cup of coffee, got some water, podcasting, thinking about Google ads and I'm geared up and just ready to attack this week and and have a great week and get some great business done. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the show with people who are interested in Google Ads. So just to talk, uh, just to preview today's show, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the three types of keywords in Google Ads and their colors. It's a theory I've been using to manage Google Ads campaigns and keywords for the past few months. And I finally kind of verbalized what was in my head and and came up with a way to describe it. So that's what we're going to be talking about uh, today. I also have a kind of persuasion thing I've been learning. Um, It kind of explains clickbait titles and and why they get us and why they're so effective. And so I'm going to use this both in my own marketing and then also as a strategy to help me be more productive with uh, articles on my websites and and podcast episodes. Uh, but to start, we've got a couple Google Ads updates here uh, that serious advertisers would, would want to know about. So the first is the COVID-19 ad credits. Google came out a few weeks ago saying that they're going to give ad credits to small and medium-sized businesses. If you search COVID-19 ad credits for Google Ads, small and medium-sized businesses. You'll see this article in Google Ads Help, and they were giving away $340 million in ad credits. Uh, You, if you advertise, you might have seen it in your account with like a blue headline at the top of the account, or you might have gotten an email, or your clients might be forwarding you emails that they got. Uh, But regardless, it seems like, at least for me and my clients that rolled out this past week, I don't know what's going on for you, the, there's people listening to this show all around the world, so I don't know, uh, being in different countries, how that affects this in terms of getting the credit or timing or whatever, but I can tell you for myself, um, the credits rolled out this last week, and we're seeing a lot of ad credits for $300 and for some for $750. And this is pretty cool. Google's just doing this to help small and medium businesses get through this time. And it's awesome. It it applies to the account. You don't have to, uh, if I read it correctly, you don't have to do anything. It just uh, hits your account and then you get a credit for the amount you get. And then when you spend that amount, uh, instead of getting your credit card charged, they run down this credit. So it's a very cool thing. It's like free ad spend. Uh, The amounts I'm seeing, $300, $750. And I've also seen a, yeah, I guess mostly, I guess mostly I'm seeing 300 and then a few 750. So very cool. Um, Again, nice job by Google. And this is, this is a cool thing. So I got clients who were pleasantly surprised. They forwarded us the emails and they say, "Uh, is this real? And yeah, it's real. And um, it's a very cool thing. So that, that can, that will uh, be a good thing to, to talk about with your clients or if uh, you're managing your own ads, uh, now you know what it is. And in terms of where to where to find your credit, if you go into Google Ads, I'm going to head over there right now. Again, I'm seeing this with a blue headline at the top of the screen. I think it's blue. And then also uh, we got some email notifications. But when you're inside of a Google Ads account and you go to the top tools and settings, and then you go to billing, and then you go to promotions. Let's see if I see it here. No, well, I'm in the wrong count here. So going to jump in. Yeah, so as, as I'm getting in there, I will uh, confirm this path for you. But um, the other update is an update about ad headline size. This is a very interesting thing. I don't know if it's Apple or Google. I think it's Google, um, but we'll talk about that here in a second. But you go to tools and settings, billing, promotions, and then, yeah, it's a blue headline at the top. And then having a little trouble with my browser here, but I'm pretty sure it's on the promotions page of the billing. 
and I'll verify that. And if I see it there, I won't bring it up. Uh, and if it is somewhere else, then I'll, I'll let you know. But I'm pretty sure it's uh, on the promotions. And then you can see if it's hit, hit uh, your account. So let's talk about the other update. I was doing some searches on an iPhone the other day on Safari. And what I noticed was the ad headline. Uh, the blue headline of the ad, the the top ad, the number one ad, and then the blue headline of the number one organic listing at the top, number one ad and number one organic. The, those were those were larger than I had seen before, and they were larger than other ads. So other other ad headlines and other organic listing headlines. So again, I'm gonna just look this up on my phone right now. I'm gonna go to Safari. I'm going to go to, I'm just going to do a search for moving quotes and the number one ad at the top has a larger headline, a larger blue headline in terms of text size and also the white space between the text lines. The text size of the blue headline is larger than the ads that are below it. And then the number one organic listing headline is larger in terms of bigger font size than the other organic listings below it. I've asked some friends about this. They have not seen this. Um, so I don't know if this is a test. I, I, did, I, I am not seeing this on Chrome on mobile. So I don't know if it's a test that's only being rolled out to Safari or it's a test that's only being rolled out some of the time. And I happen to be seeing it on Safari and I don't see it on Chrome. But it does seem like there's a test going on. And you may see it. I'd love to hear some feedback from you if you're seeing it or not. But when you see it, if you're able to see it, it's going to hit you. And you're going to be like, wow, this is big in terms of font size. But then also in terms of what that's going to do to the click-through rates on the number one organic listing and also the number one ad. So... It's very clear what's going to happen if they end up doing this where the, the headline text size is bigger on the number one ad and also bigger on the number one organic listing. Those spots in ads and organic respectively, the click-through rate on those is going to increase, you would think, and the market share on those spots for ads and organic respectively is going to increase. What does that do it makes the number one spots even more valuable. And what does that do? It probably pushes up the bidding because they're more valuable and people are going to be more competitive to get there. Okay, here we go. I think it's very clear what's happening. So this is something to be aware of. Um, and I guess that's all I could say. Uh, see if you see it on, on your phone. Again, I'm only seeing it on Safari. It's a top ad and the top organic listing the text size in the headline, the blue headline, is larger than the ads that are below the number one ad and the organic listings that are below the number one organic listing. It's going to probably pop up, click the rates on those top top areas and make them more competitive. So pay attention to that and we'll see if they roll that out across, across all mobile results. I, I don't really have a feeling on it either way. I've kind of lost the ability to feel uh, with Google updates, they're, again, I've said this in the past, they're so dynamic, they're always changing, that I don't really get hung up on changes anymore. I just kind of go with the flow. So if that's what they're going to do, that's what they're going to do. And I'll adjust to it. And I'll kind of understand that, hey, if you get to that number one spot, you're going to get a lot of click-through rate benefit there. And then also, hey, because there's click-through rate and market share benefit there now that the text is bigger, if that's what they decide to do, also might be more competitive. Uh, just be aware of that with the with the cost per click. So I'll be watching for that. So let's also talk tonight about the three types of keywords in Google Ads and their colors. So I have an article up on the website, rothmanppc.com. Uh, there are three types of keywords in Google Ads and their colors. That's what the uh, title of the, art, the article is. And basically to sum up the article, it's very... Very simple. It, it, first of all, it points out that I very much like the I like things simple, as simple as possible. That's kind of my 
one of my guiding lights in life. I love when things are as simple as possible. And just in terms of business and everything I do in life, I'm tr always trying to make them as simple as possible. So with that in mind, I've kind of come up with a simple way that I've been I've been managing uh, keywords lately. Um, and, and that's with kind of red keywords, yellow keywords, and green keywords. Now, I just came up with red, yellow, and green yesterday. But just to, just to give you some background in terms of how I came up with those, uh, when, when I manage Google Ads accounts, there's basically three types of keywords. There's keywords that don't work, and we block as negative keywords. There's keywords that might work, and we want to test them out, but we're not really sure. And then there's keywords that do work, and they're spot on, and we want to bid aggressively on them. And I've, as I've been kind of managing that way more and more, I've also been guiding my ad group structure that way um, a little bit, not a ton yet, but a little bit. But primarily what I've been doing is guiding my keyword bidding that way. And so I'm I'm bidding aggressively on the, the green keywords and the yellow keywords. I'm, I'm kind of running separate bids at, at a much lower level. So let's talk about the colors. Red keywords are keywords that are, that are, that are done by a search user who does not need what you offer. So if we're talking about moving companies, that would be a keyword like moving truck rental or moving company softwares or how to start a moving company. Those are related to the moving space but they're not relevant. Someone doing move, moving truck rental doesn't need a mover. Now, someone is going to be out there and say, well, if they, if they have moving truck rental, that means they might need labor help with labor only movers to help them load the truck. Yeah, sure. That's true. Technically that's true. But the rate of people searching moving truck rental who are also open to finding moving labor help at that exact moment they're doing the search, it's so low in the percentage of people who either don't need labor only movers or just don't want to deal with that and just want to get right to truck rental when they do that search, moving truck rental is so high that it just makes it basically impossible to target keywords like that because so much of your clicks are going to be non-relevant traffic that's not going to convert into a lead and you'd have to bid so low on them to make the cost per conversion work then you're not going to show up and you're not going to get clicks so it's like not worth kind of cluttering up your account with them and adding them as negative keywords so those are red keywords red keywords and someone would ask well why would anyone have a red keyword well some people try out those keywords some people run loose broad modified some people run some types of phrase keywords that pick it up. Some people run pure broad and you'll see those kind of search terms come in the search terms report and you need to have a plan to deal with them. So those are red keywords. Red means someone doing the search does not need your service. Then there are yellow keywords. And an example of yellow keywords for moving companies uh, would be something like moving or moving checklist. Those are keywords that show that the user might need what you offer yellow you know red yellow green yellow those are keywords that the search user might that show they might need what you offer so if you're a moving company and someone does a search for a moving checklist they might be in the market for local movers as well and even though they didn't do the search movers in baltimore they also still might need movers. They just didn't happen to do that search at the moment. They're a little higher in the funnel, a little earlier in the process, and they're doing the search moving checklist. Another example would be the word moving, phrase match. Now, for the movers out there, that one is a very dangerous keyword because there's so many things moving can show up on, and it's just, I don't know. I don't, I'd never run that keyword. But how about the words moving to? as a phrase match. So if someone's in Miami and they're doing searches like moving to Phoenix, moving to New York city, moving to California, moving across, well, moving to another state, the phrase match moving to that's going to be a yellow keyword. So someone doing those searches 
moving to Arizona, moving to California, moving to New York City, they might need a moving company when they do that search, but they might not. And so that's why it's a yellow keyword. And then green keywords, spot on. There's nothing better than them. You know with certainty you've done everything you can do to get in front of people who are looking for your service. Sure, it could be someone doing that search who's a PPC manager trying to get a feel for the search results. But let's just forget about those theoretical things. It's just if someone does a search, movers in Los Angeles and you're a Los Angeles moving company, boom, spot on green. That is that is as good as you can get. Moving companies, movers in my area, movers near me, that's as good as you can get. Long distance movers, those are green keywords. That's someone who's searching for exactly what you offer and we know they need your service. So those are the only three types of keywords. There's keywords you don't want where they don't need your service, red. There's keywords where you might want to test them because they might need your service, yellow. And then there's keywords where you do want to target them because you know they do need your service, green. What do you want me to do? You want me to write like a 300-page book and charge $30 and put it online on Amazon and, and make you read through 300 pages to give you that? I mean, what do you want me to do? You want me to do like a webinar and charge like two thousand dollars to learn that like i just i can't do it it's too simple so my book about keywords and the types of keywords it's one page it's one article now i'm not talking match types i'm not talking bidding but i am talking the types of keywords you can target on google ads there's three what do you want me to do it's simple i can't write a book about it my book's one page so i love simplicity i just absolutely love it and this is the way i'm managing accounts this is the way i'm communicating to my clients Red, yellow, green. So now that you know those are the three types of keywords and every search term that you come across, every keyword you come across when doing keyword research, you know what color it falls into, red, yellow, or green. And for red, I'm adding those as negative keywords when I see them come in. For yellow, I'm testing those out. I'm expecting some of them to work and bring in conversions at a high enough rate to keep targeting them. I'm also expecting some of them to not work out at a high enough rate to keep targeting them. And I'm also expecting them to have lower conversion rates on average than the green keywords. So because they have lower conversion rates, I'm going to be bidding lower on them so we can still hit our cost per conversion goal. That's how I handle yellow. I give them, I try them out. You can label them. You can figure out how to keep track of them. You can put individual bids on them. You can lower the bids on them expecting that they're going to not produce as well, but they may produce something and you never know. You might be surprised. They might produce great and you test them, see how they do. And you try to find the right bidding level to get your cost per conversion goal. And then you got green keywords and green keywords are where you bid aggressively. You bid strong. You expect those to produce your best conversion rates. And because they produce the best conversion rates, you can bid on them the most aggressively And because they have the high conversion rates, the high bids will still pay off because the high conversion rates will lead to the kind of cost per conversion you want. Now, it's all about finding the right level, but just generally, that's how I handle my bidding. Yellow, I know I'm going to be bidding lower because the conversion rates are lower. Green, I know I'm going to be bidding higher because the conversion rates are higher. When it comes to yellow, you want to be open-minded. You want to constantly be reading about the industry, be trying to come up with new yellow keywords to test out with green uh you want to be making sure you get all your green keywords it's a big big mistake to have green keywords out there that you're not targeting and i see that all the time i'll do a search i'll see an advertiser they're competing with me they're on the green keyword i'm looking at then i'll do another green keyword that uh maybe is a little off the beaten path it searched for much less than the other green keyword but it's still searched for boom, I see us there. I don't see them there because they don't know about it. And that's where you can kind of find some magic with green keywords. There's still some that are still searched for, but at a lower rate, but are less competitive, but produce just as strong as the well-known green keywords. That's where a lot of magic can come into a a Google ads campaign. So red, yellow, green, that's, that's the way I'm grouping keywords these days. And I just love, absolutely love how simple it is. And if you can figure out how to avoid the red, how to test the yellow, and how to master your aggressiveness levels on your green keywords, Uh, you're pretty much mastering uh, keyword management there. So that is what I am looking at 
tonight in terms of keywords. Now, let's finish up here talking about persuasion. I'm reading Persuasion by Robert Cialdini and or Cialdini, and he's the master of persuasion, trying to learn from him, trying to learn persuasion, number one, to put up a defense for myself and be able to fight back against this world. We got master persuaders all around us trying to take money out of our pocket, trying to get us to do things that benefit them in life and in business. And if you don't know what they're doing, you're just basically being played your whole life. So I do it for defense. I, I, I feel so strongly about studying persuasion for defense. And then I feel strongly about studying it for offense. When it comes to business, like I offer a good service, I help people grow their businesses, but I have to figure out how to communicate to that to them in a way that's going to get them to want to work with me. So A, I can get money and put food on the table and B, so they can get a great service and use my talents to grow their business. So very much interested in persuasion, both for offense and, and defense. Now I'm reading Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. He also has the book Influence, of course. But one thing I just learned in that book is about the human need for closure. And this is why click clickbait works basically. Now, I don't really like the word clickbait. I'm not going to use it again because it has such a negative connotation to me. And I think to a lot of people that I just don't want to, I don't want to be like, I don't want those words coming out of my mouth. I don't like saying it, but we do see click. Uh, I almost said again, we do see the need for closure with headlines all the time. Uh, what a company that's really good at headlines, it, I think, is the New York Post. So I'm going to go to their website now. So let's read a couple. Let's read a couple headlines here. Um, let's see here. Okay, well, this one's just good. Blowing the job, man allegedly caught at airport with cocaine-filled fake penis. I mean, that one writes itself. So what are you going to do? But uh, but an example of a good kind of need for closure headline: Ken Griffey Jr. may never stop hating the Yankees. So, I I need closure. Why why does why does Ken Griffey Jr. hate the Yankees? I need closure. Um, and it, another example is what I did with the title of the, of this episode. The three kinds of keywords in Google Ad, Google Ads, and their colors. So what does that mean? What what are the three kind of keywords? What are what what's the deal with the colors? When you saw that podcast episode title, you. You you might have a lot of you might have felt inside like whoa I need to know what those three are what does he mean by colors and even if you didn't listen to the episode that minute there was probably something you pulling you back to this episode uh, throughout the day when you pick up your phone thinking like oh I I need to check out that one because that's something I'm interested in so I feel this way myself when I see headlines out there. And the reason is, is because apparently reading this book, Persuasion, we have a need as humans for closure. And so when it comes to persuasion, I do like kind of knowing the theory behind things uh, and why people theorize humans develop the way we have developed. But at the same time, I'm also just interested in in just knowing what 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 is going on with us and, and the the the. The idea of why, like, why do humans have the need for closure? Why do we evolve that way? I'm not as interested in that because I don't even know if if we can know. It's just more of a theory thing. But in terms of do we need closure? Yes, it does seem like we definitely need closure. And that's why, you know, I watch like the Jersey Shore family vacation. And every week at the end of the episode, that's why they do that little one minute preview of the next episode. Because it plants seeds in us and we're like, oh, Angelina's freaking out at her wedding. Who's she freaking out at? Why is she freaking out? I'm going to tune in next Thursday because I need that closure. So again, the theory about why, I don't know. I don't know why we're, we've we've been made this way. But all I can tell you is when I heard Cialdini saying this about the need for closure, it connected with me. I was like, okay, that is true. 
That is definitely something that I experience. And so now let me use that as a tool in my toolkit to both defensively and offensively become a master persuader. So a couple of ways I'm using this is one with with article and blog, uh, article and podcast headlines, but also Cialdini talks about a friend of his who's a prolific writer in the academic space. And he asked her, how did, how, how is she pro- so prolific with her writing? And he, she, she told him one of the tricks she uses is every time she's done writing, she finishes on a thought prematurely. So like if she's writing, she writes a page. And then what she does is she starts out her next few sentences, her next thought, her next sentence, her next word, whatever, but she doesn't close that, that, topic. So if she's writing and then she starts out a paragraph and then instead of finishing the paragraph, finishing the thought, she stops writing mid paragraph, mid thought in the human need for closure. She found without, I think without saying the human need for closure, she just found that if she left her work, she left her desk, left her writing on an open-ended thought without closing that thought off and finishing that paragraph or whatever, she found herself going back to her desk more to continue the thought and to to finish her writing. And so it got her back to her desk more. And that's one way she's so prolific at her writing. And Cialdini said the instant he heard her say that, he connected it with the human need for closure. And he was like, oh, that's going to work. That's going to work great. And he does it. And then I do it. Because when I heard that, I'm like, yeah. That's a trick. That's going to work great because it's hard to sit down at your desk and write or sit down at your desk and podcast. And that need for closure, not only can we use it on others with headlines and all that kind of stuff, ad copy, by the way, everyone listening, but we can also use it on ourselves. And so what I'm going to do when I wrap up this episode here, I'm going to start planning out the next episode. And I have a thought in my head on what I want to talk about. And so I'm just going to write down on the little area where I keep my next podcast idea. And I'm just going to write down a sentence and maybe I'll cut it off mid sentence. Maybe I'll just do one sentence, but I'm just going to kind of start planning my next episode. So now when I go into my Monday, my Tuesday, and I have some, uh, some free time, I'll be like, Oh, that, that podcast idea that I came up with Sunday night, I need to get back and and finish that thought. And I'm going to do that with my writing as well. So when I finish something, I'm going to start something, but not finish the thought. So I want to tell you about that human need for closure I read about and then and then how I'm kind of using it in my life. So with that, we're going to close out today's episode. I want to thank you for listening. Again, this is the Rothman PPC Podcast. Please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcast. And then just share share the show, social media, share it with your friends in the in the industry. And we'll be talking Google ads and business and all that kind of stuff here on the Rothman PBC podcast. Thank you for listening.